are aboard this ship for a few days, you notice that one member of the crew is a birdman. His job is as watcher and catcher of the ship. Can I test that? Oh. Let's give it a crack. Oh, 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 oh. This will be the most bodger way of dying <laughs> ever. And then a minute or so later. Oh, 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 oh. I'm concerned that the mask is cursed. I need to know what it does. No. 150 gold, I will give you three times what you paid for it. Give me 10 minutes or that, I'm just gonna see what's up. Okay. Is that cool? Uh. What do you do for the rest of the day? You giving this mask back? Do you want any more information from Padrick? I'll give my mask, yeah, give it back. Thank you. I go on a hunt for some ale or some whiskey. Yeah, I, yeah, I start doing push-ups, because I'm frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> more more <laughs> I, I, I am getting checked! I, I, go, I go back into my spell book. Um, I'm reading my spell book. All right, so, the next night... Mm, let's see, who do we start with? I'm probably the only Baradun. one awake. Baradun. Okay. Baradun. As you're sleeping, a muffled voice speaks in the darkness. If word gets out before we're ready, we will spread the word. East watch with all they've got on, going on right now. They're not looking to the west. And Wraith, <laughs> there's practically no one left there to spread word anyway. And even if there was, unless we're making them gamblers, brewers or whores, the people of Wraith will have no interest since the plague. Still, there's the last outpost, or Vertohan, Terence. There is no one better th than you for doing this work. But let me worry about the bigger picture. Yes, master. There's a pause. And then, rise. You feel your hands move ahead of you in the darkness. Something's resisting them. Is it stonework? No, it's moving. Is it dirt? It's too dry for that. Sand. Your hand bursts from the ground and your head soon, fo soon follows and you're met by blinding light as you barely make out the retreating form of a cloaked and hooded humanoid, and a much closer, much shorter one too. Should you target, target the shorter one, or should you target the taller one? Time runs out for you to decide, so you de decide to target both. Your hand feels even colder as you hold it out to point at both creatures, frost appearing on the tips. But the tall one spins, and with a wave of his hand, puts a stop to your attack. A neat trick, you think, as the sand swallows you back down once more. Was that a dream? <clears throat> I didn't hear the it was a transition a dream. into a dream. No. It didn't yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <gasps> Where'd they go? Maybe Bodger. in the edit we'll have like a little wavy effect or something. Not wavy effect. Wavy effect. Yeah. yeah. In here! Darren yells as you whip around to see him pierce his spear through an ox chest and nod over his shoulder to the stone building behind him. This could help, you think. You had sort of underestimated the force of that last platoon, and if Aaron hadn't taken out that shaman's other eye with a very well-placed dart, this might have been the end of you. You rush over to your Grootvada and notice the building he is offering you. It's a watchtower. You see Aaron already charging up the stairs inside, and there's an orcish scream punctuated by the loud crack as it hits the stone floor. All clear, your bro calls from above, and you step inside and help Darren bar the door. If they saw us enter, we'll be trapped here, you volunteer, but your Groot Vader dismisses it. Even if they did, we'll have the d advantage, as he starts up the spiral staircase. You look down at the body on the ground, more resembling a scorpion now than an orc for the shape it takes, and you think to yourself how, often, how, how he also had the advantage moments before. Still, you make your way up to the top and take watch as Aaron starts boiling a pot and preparing to catch his breath. Something doesn't feel right though. Your gut tells you that this is no time to rest. And as Darren stands to take his military issue bowl and spoon over to Aaron's pot, your feral instincts have proven right. Your javelin stri the javelin strikes with such force that Darren is knocked onto the ground, sending his spoon clattering to your feet, and luckily taking him behind the cover of the ramparts. You have only a moment to glance over to the orc who threw it, Six foot six, with grey-green skin, serrated tusks, and jagged war paint on the left of his face. He yells, and you duck out of sight as he pulls out another javelin. You hear their orcish war cries calling out your location, and you know it's only moments before they're on you. 
You try and get Darren to his feet, but as you sit him up, your hand scrapes across the tip of the javelin and you realise it's gone straight through him. With mere seconds to live, he pulls you both close. Tell Sharon I am proud of her. Tell Roger I forgive him. He clasps his hand around the back of your necks. I love you both dearly. Aaron, to you I give my dagger. He uncouples his dagger belt and hands, <gasps> then his hand goes to his warhammer. Bodger, to you I give. He's about to give me. Yes, it's clear that he's about to. And he was going to give me the hammer. You don't know how you have these feral instincts, but you <laughs> sense the splintering of wood downstairs before you hear it. They found you. Aaron grabs the weapons as Darren pulls his orange beaded necklace off and with the last of his en- energy stands and rolls off the top of the balcony to the ox below. The explosion wakes you. And then he goes with the hammer. Yeah. And he gave me the hammer rightfully. I knew I was right. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I, th- I thought you were about <laughs> to have a dream where it's like, oh no, he did give me the spoon. I, I literally <laughs> thought it was about to be, I give <laughs> my spoon. Yeah, give you the spoon. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh no, that, I was, I misremembered. <laughs> he gave him the hammer, it wasn't mine. <laughs> It's been 20 years like, in boiling over this. I considered it, but I was like, yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> that would have been, whew, awkward. Oh, no. I'm go. going like, oh. Damn it. Greg, as you're sleeping. Lots of kids and no livestock, Pete Gurlitt says as he trundles away, leaving you to shovel this pile of manure that smells not like manure. You can't bring yourself to get close enough to shovel it by hand, and you're no longer confident that you could sell it as fertilizer in your shop. <sighs> shop. So, so dirty. Who's going to clean it? I have to get a cleaner. So your busy mind turns to inventive ways to clear it out. If you could tinker with that spider-legged gnomish toy that you have in the back, maybe you could find a way to make it burn away this pile of shit. You suddenly have a flash of genius. The pyrolite. It's a rusty red gemstone that you bought from an adventurer along with the rest of his inventory, and it's said to be fed from the plane of fire. So you set to work, tinkering with the toy and adding a tube to act as a barrel to direct the flame. As you work, though, your brain remains active on something else. Lots of kids and no livestock. The girlets do have a lot of kids. You'd never really thought about that before. And yet, now that you're thinking about it, you've never seen Sandra Girlet pregnant. The smell of hot shit pulls you from your reverie (laughs) as you see the newly newly assembled flamethrowers set to work. You rush out to try and prevent it catching your shop as uh, (laughs) as well as the pile of shit. And you see the fear in the eyes of your sheep who are now starting to run amok. A second, damn it! A, a second flash of genius, and you think, ah, perhaps a redesign is in order for the second prototype. A flash of genius, you say? Yeah. Happy. And that's all the dreams for the. <laughs> Bob. Bob's just drunk. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everyone's asleep. Time for another restless night. As you are passing out drunk on the uh, hull of the ship, you find yourselves in a. You, you find yourself in a cave. A cool, welcoming air around you. Mm, cool and welcoming. Mm. You haven't been paying mm. close enough attention to the rhythmic drip and dripping of the beyond. But if you had, you'd have a better chance of knowing how long you've been staring at this dragon. It must have been for a few days since you last drank the last of its blood. Because its desiccated corpse is beginning to smell in the heat. How strange this dream world is. Missing. You hear Vidoran say. Or was it you who said it? It echoes around the cave walls either way, and you know that the dragon's absence has been noted, and they're coming to find it. You walk to meet them, and almost reach for the boulder by the cave mouth, before remembering, no, you have your own boulders now. Kill, you say, and your eyes bleed black. You now stand in the sunlight. How strange this dream world is. And though it does make it easier to spot the little bugs crawling up towards you. You send your smoke rock towards them. Strike. The little pins go careening backwards off, off with the force of it, and some topple over the edge. No, wait, it wasn't a strike. There's one remains. He steadies his little arm towards you and throws his tiny hammer. The blow is softened by the darkness that you wear before the hammer is called back to his hand. You step forwards and find yourself leaving the castle and walking towards the, the blue abyss. Something's wrong. You went in a castle. You stop. You hear a woman say with your mouth, and then you're thrust awake. All of you have leveled up to level seven! Yay! Beep, 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 beep.
Hey, you guys have uh, interesting dreams last night? No, it's uh, totally normal. Don't fun. think so. <laughs> yep, neither did I. My dream sucked. <laughs> <laughs> just, just remember that oh. you were bullied by the local family. Yeah, it just smelled like shit and just got bullied. <laughs> Real shitty dreams. Real shitty dreams. Yeah, yeah, I have 48 HP now. Nice. Oh, yeah. You rolling for it or are you taking averages? I just did the average. You did average? Oh, I did yeah, average I'd like well. to roll. I will take an average. <laughs> uh, level up. I'm, I'm going to gamble my, All right. my D12. HP. D that's a D20. Oh. <laughs> that's so hang on. D12 plus your constitution modifier. Is what's going to be the extra yep. health. Okay. Hang on, D12. Then this is no. a 1, in which case you roll again. D12. <laughs> 10! Hey, hey! Nice, above average. So, 12 points of extra damage. So, hit points, 81. Nice! 81 hit points. It's going to be hard boy to sit down. Hard boy! Hard boy. Um, when he's raging, that's essentially like 162 hit points. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My, my previous great axe... Was 1d12 plus 3, which is the maximum of f uh, 15. Yep. And my thing is 1d10 plus 4, which is the maximum of 14. Yep. So the minimum and maximum have both come in by 1, but the average is actually, going, uh, is actually oh. the same. Okay. So you're more consistent with your damage. Okay. You, can't, you can't do as low as you did before if you'd have rolled a 1 on the 12 okay. uh, plus 3. You could have done 4. Yeah, there's the ways to guarantee. Five. I'm kind of more likely to get a slightly yeah. higher. Yep. And as you increase the Warhammer by killing more giants, you, yeah. it'll get better and better. And sorry, invocations, are they spells? No. Cantrips? S Just Sometimes the spells, they're different things. Right. Um, yes, right. Your mage armor, armor of shadows, means that you can just ca cast mage armor without spending a spell slot. Right, sweet. How much um, can I hold? Like I've got a great axe, hand axe, javelin, warhammer. Because it's because you guys are in a video game, I I'm, I don't mind about inventory management as much. Okay, that's right. Nice. Yeah, in my home games, I would be like, you, you're gonna have to choose like two weapons and the rest <coughs> them put down. Yeah, right. I'll put in a bag of holding. Now, cool. uh, my war, my warhammer. Yes. Uh, is there any some mechan mechanic it's mechanics about how I can use that? Yep, you throw it, so you throw still it. use the same attack modifier. Yeah. But you can hit somebody within 20 feet. If you if if they're between 20 and 60 feet, you can still make the attack, but it's at disadvantage. And if they're more than 60 feet, it's too far. Okay. And can then you throw it, it through somebody and hit somebody else? You get no. like, you can't. So so <laughs> sorry, I can throw it and it does the same damage as if I was same damage. That's pretty except, cool. Except for rage, you can't add rage damage to a thrown thrown. I can't add rage. Okay. Does it return to him on the same uh, turn? And, and then and at then the end of that attack, it comes back. But can I use that return? You do it again. Thing in a different and creative ways. Yeah, man. But, it, but, but can I throw it and leave it there and then come and get it back later on? I think on here it says... I would, have, I would allow that. Okay, let's allow it's, what, it's, what, it. it's what Aaron did at the end of the fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's our rules. I don't give a this is. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a rebel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you badass. I won't, like what, what Aaron was trying to do in that fight when he ran away and left you prone, he was hoping you couldn't have the room to, uh, to get all the way to him. So then he could use the throwing ability of the axe and then uh, the, the hammer and oh. then bring it back to himself and show off the fact that he has a returning axe. But you've got such, such a lot of movement that yeah. <laughs> you, you got just there. ended up meleeing the whole time. Um, so, towards right. the end of like seven or eight days on, sh on the ship, <clears throat> you're not sure how much longer you've got to go, but looking overboard, you can see that the ground is starting to get warmer looking it seems like you've passed the last the the southernmost mountain range of uh, of the dead frost and you are now officially back in azarim Yay. um there is a a calling from the crow's nest however a calling from Irin, the uh, arakokra watch who calls out that there is uh, something approaching something approaching and as he shouts that there's something approaching from the uh, the Bodger just leaps off and tries to catch it. <laughs> What's up? So, uh, something approaching from the from the port stern, and uh, and you look over and there's this odd shaped, cloudy, wispy kind of mist that seems to be swirling, almost ball like, towards the 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 ship. I'll be fine. Do, I ignore it. <laughs> I study its movement. Just ignore <laughs> it. <laughs> guy, everyone, everyone, back to what you're doing. Ignore it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. As it reaches the, the bow of the ship, it starts to coalesce. Oh god. Until standing in front of you. Wow. Is a Who's this bitch? 24 foot tall tower of a woman. She's a, she's a real mountain. She has a skin tone that resembles an overcast sky. Hair as translucent and pale as an uh, alto stratus cloud. 
She's dressed in the finest of silk gowns and shoulder cape to match. And she has an ornate breastplate seemed to be crafted from solid mithril, demonstrating the highest of craftsmanship. On her forehead, she wears an item of go golden jewellery the size of a dinner plate, and it's so well crafted as to be worth more than many men might make in a month. She has her hands folded behind her back as she assumes physical form. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have movable minutes! You can imagine later! Honestly, what is the point? <laughs> If you want to stop paying me more, I can um, start my getting some movable mini gone. parts. I uh, know. Right. Sorry. Good. Yeah, if you get if you if you get me a bloody three dimensional uh, printer, three D printer, and I can just for every action, just for every like, different. She raises up her weapon. Yeah, she's got. She's got a round she... behind her back. So I've got <laughs> so like that... a million different minis, <laughs> all with slightly different facial expressions. God, Rob always takes ten <laughs> hours to pack in. <laughs> Turn this into she a stop motion. With a, <laughs> she, <laughs> so, she appears with a look of aggressive disdain on her face. <laughs> Go through the heads. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> Which uh, slowly shifts to bemusement. Uh, you, you have a way of undercutting my dramatic scenes, don't you? No, <laughs> continue. It's the Marvel way. So continue. I really enjoy it. So the hands folded behind us has seen, uh, uh, as she assumes physical form, but she promptly adopts an open, open, non-hostile stance with her jewellery adorned arms outstretched. She says, My name is Baroness Vazagri. I am not here to hurt you. I've been waiting... Your transit for many years. I have a message for you. For who? That is the problem. I do not quite know. It's probably for me. <laughs> probably. There is one among your number who is touched by perhaps the darkness. Is there someone of elven descent on your crew? Oh, oh, el el elven and mysterious darkness. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I woke up. All right. <laughs> hey, big All right. right. Hello. Can you make a um, perception check, please? Sure can. One. <laughs> Is that a one or a seven? No, that's a seven. That's a seven. <laughs> Best guess. Yeah, no. uh, what, yeah. what was a perception? Yep. Uh, all plus five, so... Twelve. Twelve. Um, you... If, if very, very vaguely, you feel like you recognise the voice. Mm. Not sure why. Is that the voice from your head? Your patron. Yeah. Can I telepath into her head? You can. As you walk forwards to this towering 24 foot tall woman, you yeah, telepath with. Telepath on her. All right. And she responds with. The rest of you don't hear it, but you hear back in, in your head. He's calling it Dujo, Vorden, Jenan, Verdonin. Yeah, how about. And yeah, yeah, yeah. that exact phrase in this voice, you realise that was the phrase that the woman spoke in your dream with using your mouth ah. as you stepped out of the castle. And you realise this is the woman that spoke using yeah. you in the dream. Right. Yeah, right. And then she closes her eyes. The rest of you just see her close her eyes and then you feel your telepathic uh, connection sever. Ow. Ow. Is, ah. that, is that what it's like? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, like ah. <laughs> ah. it's kind of like the brain freeze again. Like, yeah. Ah, shit. Down the ice cream. Yeah, stop eating ice cream, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, and if you're gonna eat it, don't All eat it right. in one mouthful. He's oh. <laughs> got handfuls of crushed ice in his jaw. <laughs> oh, it's right behind the eyes. Oh, I don't know what's happened to my voice. Oh, there. Oh, there I am. That was weird. Who are you? Uh. Hello, my name is Bob. What's your name? I gave my name when I arrived. Ba yeah. Baron Baroness. Yeah, yeah. I've been Bezzegrin. drinking. <laughs> but what is it, Greg? Baroness Venom Venom Vazagrin. All right, nice to meet you, Baroness Vazagrin. 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 Perhaps we're going to offend her and she's just going to say her. It perhaps is you who I've been waiting for. <laughs> Maybe, I get that a lot. There was a prophecy made among my people many years ago. All right. My people have been plagued for over 30 years with a darkness, a sickness. It calls out to be helped, to be returned, to be understood. Okay, now you're speaking my language. Perhaps it would be quicker for me to simply tell you the prophecy. Probably, yeah. So, sounds great. Oh. Please, I'm, I'm not please involved. Do. Are we, are we <laughs> forgive, so forgive the meter. I have translated it into your common tongue. Okay. And walk closer so I can hear. 
Yeah, I will. With Verdorin, the giants shall be plagued to kill and drink the blood of those they've slain for all the life and past their dying days to return to live over and again. This storm shall last for more than score and ten with cause just out of reach for all who seek. Not gone and yet neither forgotten until with silent talking it can speak. Thus wait ye for arrival of the blade that sings revenge for giant and for man. This sorcerer shall come before the fade betwixt Vikendi and the Vertohan. Upon the skies you look for there a boat, designed for ocean sail but now afloat, aboard a passenger of elf descent, with incomplete recall of where he went, shall be the one to rid the giant kin of darkness and undeath from Verdorin. Rhymes really well considering it's not an English yeah, I, put, I put a lot of work <laughs> yeah, into I that put a lot of work into making <laughs> sure that it's I walk up and tap her on the name. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Thank you. Oh, thank Someone's you. a poet and doesn't know it. Thank well, you. Well, it does yeah. know it. It is a, it's a major uh, boon among my people to you, be wordsmiths. You must have worked a long time on that. Oh, thank you. I yeah, did. I've been, really I've been waiting for your passage for over 30 years. Yeah, yeah, wow. As the, you can tell. As the rhyme says, uh, score on 10, uh, there's 30 years of plague before the elf shall arrive. Well, you've so, used that time very well. Yeah. So please, Bob, was it? Yeah, that's right. Very elf. Bartholomew Osiris Blade Song. But just call me Bob, it's fine. Blade Song? Yeah. Then you are the one. Yes. And she repeats hey, one of the verses. Yeah, yeah, she repeats yeah, one of the yeah. verses. Thus wait you for arrival of the blade yeah, that sings that. revenge yeah. for giant and for man. Yeah, it all of that. Way. Yeah, that. It seems that you are the one who are waiting true. for. <laughs> yeah. So please tell me what you can of Verderin. Verderin? <laughs> Where do I begin? Hey, you're Verderin. Right. Verderin. Hey, you're rhyming. Everybody's rhyming. Mate, Verderin is a place. Yeah. Where. Things happen. <laughs> and you got Bob. We Tank. all know what goes on there. I think that's enough. What were, what were you trying to get get out? <laughs> I listen. Listen. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I know. I know. Apparently, I'm part of your prophecy. Yay me. I don't know what you're talking about. I hear the voices that you're mentioning, the return, the revenge, the drink, etc. I have black smoke that comes out of my eyes. I don't know why. I'm doing push ups. I see. Just any opportunity there, yeah. I'm, like, I'm not feeling this. <laughs> I see. That is disappointing. Right, what, what is Verdurin? It is the giant name for this creature that speaks with us, that brings us back from the dead oh. to force us to relive once again. Oh, oh she a giant. Oh, so is that, is that like- Did you say, is she a giant? Well, I'm sorry, she's tall, but I didn't know she was a giant. <laughs> she's 24 foot tall. Oh, uh, there's been a lot of tall people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they've all been giants. <laughs> yeah, well, the hill giants, yeah, exactly. that had smoky eyes. Yeah, exactly eyes, right, and Rob. Forest, yeah. Yeah, frost That's why you were saying, eyes. oh, she's so a giant. giant. <laughs> she's also yeah. a giant. Oh, is she a giant? Wow. Yeah, I, I think so. Oh, I... I, well, well I, she, she's not a dwarf, is she? Well, no, I just thought she was a tall lady, like a really tall lady. I don't know if she's a giant. Like a, like a really, really tall lady, like a giant. Well, okay, oh, okay, let me cover I know she's a giant, she is giant, but I didn't know she was a giant. I can't even believe I'm sorry. Even I know that. Yeah. And even I don't, Bodger knows Even that. I know that, and I don't know things. Yeah, exactly. You, Baradun, would know she's a cloud giant, specifically. Yeah, yeah. I knew that. She's a giant <laughs> of load of clouds. Um, right, well, because just in the place we were, I met a little dwarf fella, and he, w he had smoke coming out of his eyes, and I was talking to him about patrons and stuff, because apparently that's a thing. So is this Verderin? Is that potentially who's inside my brain? It sounds like it, yes. Mm. Um, can you make a, an intelligence check, please? <laughs> <laughs> Minus one, fifteen. Um, <laughs> as, really she, as she says this name, you, you just dismissed it at first for like just a name. The ver the veteran name. Yeah, but then you realise it's kind of close to the giant word for like wilting or um, that sort of uh, action of, of like a a a a, a plant 
sort of wilting away. Bob, just Sorry. just a uh, <laughs> little bit of a, I think I just, I, See, switch over to, word, switch over to crunches now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just so you know, yeah, in, give the answer right. in giant from memory, that kind of yeah, means crunches. like wilting, doing burpees. kind of. Okay. Kind of, like, kind of like your necromancy powers, you know? Yeah, do with right. that what you Not want. Not necromancy, just, your uh, I was like, necrotic powers. What's that word? Yeah, yeah. That word's familiar. Uh, anyway. Anytime there's exposition, I'm in the background just doing various exercises. <laughs> you remember this for D&D sure, Day. You sure you <laughs> want to commit to that? Yeah, you're, you're going remember to this for Green Screen Day. I'm just in the background doing star jumps. So like, <laughs> you're we'll going to regret that decision like ten... <laughs> so hard. <laughs> that, that, well, that's me. He's, he just he took he literally took one of his magic items so that he wouldn't have to wear all of the sweaty yeah. Yeah. sweaty winter clothing, and instead he's opted to do like <laughs> working out. At least I don't have to do it in winter gear. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're just gonna put ten minutes of you just just filming you doing workouts, and then we can just like put it in can, the background. Actually, that's not a bad idea. That could be a good Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I um I pass on that knowledge. Yeah. There you go. Right. So withering, withering. Like the wither, like that, um, Oi. that, that wolf in there, isn't it? Oh. Eh? Right, okay. Is it, is it all... Oh, it's almost like there's some plan. <laughs> it's almost like somehow this was planned out ahead. <laughs> Weird, what a coincidence. It was, anyway. It was planned, it is, that's what a prophecy means. So I, 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 take a quick, I take a quick step up and go, so, so what are you expecting Bob to do or about this I horrible prophecy? I have been waiting for your arrival to rid the giant kin of Vedarin, as the prophecy foretells. I assumed that you would know what it is that you do. Yeah, nah. That is disappointing. Look, mate, I'm happy to help. Thank I'm you always keen for a bit of adventure. Hey. He is I'm good at exploding giants. Uh, We've seen it a few times. Yeah, He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Exploding That's kind giants. of how this all started, actually. There was a hill giant who was yeah. possessed with Verderin, I guess. I got inside of that sucker, blew him up! Did, blood, and, uh, did his blood get in your mouth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and everywhere else. Oh, yeah. I ate a few of his organs, swallowed a bunch of his blood. It's a thing. Uh, it has long been... A hypothesis of mine that perhaps the drink is not ordering the creature that Verderin inhabits, but ordering the creatures that they meet. I think for Verderin to be passed on, the blood of one encompassing him must be drunk. I think that is how Verderin is trying to get spread, is to have other creatures drink their blood. So if people Did drink you, your blood. You guys want some vertebrae? No, no, don't give me any of your blood. <laughs> yes. What would happen? Right now. What would happen if I was to just like no, no, and I was go trap, try and see? Is it look up? Do you, do you? Are you sure you want to go down this route? Just I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say. Yeah. Are Roger, you sure you want to go down this route? Remember how poorly leaping off the airship nearly went for you. Right. So you want to have a little. Ow. There you go. Okay. So I'm just gonna. Maybe have a little fresh out the tap. <laughs> you can try it if you want. It's content. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> I so I'm just gonna have a little taste. Yeah, go for it. What's gonna happen? I don't know. All right. Like, live dangerous. Oh. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Like me with the blood oil. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is gonna. So wait, 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 wait. Do you We've already got one wall up here. Oh, I don't want to multi. Would I have to multi? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have I to can't be you. bothered with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit you got your axe. You're uh, sweet. I got my axe. You got your, oh, your white hammer. So we get to the point where we're about. We're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then as we're doing, we're like, is this the best idea? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Shit. I don't really understand. I, I, I you I definitely don't, get, don't you understand. Right now and it's like, I'm like, I'm, give it a little cut. I'm like, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, actually. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. No, I probably shouldn't. I mean, because uh, what did it do to you? You could do that to me, and uh, what are the consequences? Oh, I'm fine, aren't I? Oh, I'm, drunk. Drunk. Oh, I'm so glad you guys <laughs> this, didn't do that. This cloud giant's just low. <laughs> like, I'm oh, studying him. This movements. is our savior. <laughs> <laughs> this is the savior of all of my giant kin. What did you say? I'm studying her movements. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested. Just, I like how she moves. Acting. At the moment, okay. just, just standing proud. Okay, okay, I'm standing. So I'm, I'm about to give Bodger something. I like, actually know. Wait, look, we don't know what we're doing. This is powers beyond. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, well then, perhaps when you are ready, 
and she brings her hand out in front and sort of swirls it around as if she's like swirling a brandy and this 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 mist appears in front of her and coalesces into like a pouch like a bag and then she uh, places it down it's quite tiny on, in her big hand but she places it down hands you this large bag and as you look inside there's some pretty sizable uh, dry beans there's uh, 12 of them and she says well, beans don't go far to yeah. she says when you are uh, when you know more about this Vedarin power and why it has been gifted to you and perhaps your communication with Vedarin has increased you will need to journey to the base of a heaven's piercing mountain and plant one of these beneath a cloudy sky water the bean and chant the words Vazagri Castile Vazagri Hen Bring me Narvar Halvol Kalin Zerven and then wait for someone to jack you <laughs> someone else wrote that down right Jack, you Jack you heard that as giant saying Vazagri which is her name Vazagri castle Vazagri home bring me to where, wherever her cloud may roam I'm not writing this down I don't know that's um, what you recognise and then presumably I'm gonna I officially in game <laughs> take that information on so does he will be retained Give with you, you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was yeah. it well, I told you but, it in English <laughs> Oh, okay. Vasa, hang on, I've got that. Vasa, <laughs> 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 At least so we're writing that down. We wrote that down. Is that about right? Uh, I mean, yep, yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Cool. Her name multiple times, like... Vasagri Castle, Vasagri Home, bring me to wherever her cloud may roam. You need to say this in giant. <clears throat> after after planting and watering the bean beneath a cloudy sky at the foot of a heavens piercing mountain. Okay. Take me to where her, oh, her well. cloud may roam. Where, that's a good castle, that's a great home, take where, me to where her ever her so in giant and under a cloudy sky at the foot of a mountain. May run. And she says, doing so will allow you uh, to summon yourself to my home. So the, the, the name is Vas... Vasagri. And, and is it a person's name? So that's my name. Uh, oh, it's her name. Baroness Vasagri. Vasagreen? Vasagri. Vasagri. Do you, does she still have faith in us after... <laughs> Seems like she lost that as soon. She was she for thirty years since getting this prophecy. She's been like w watching the skies between Vikendi and Vertohan, and like waiting for this airship to come by where there's going to be an elf. And like the number of airships she would have intercepted over thirty years to be like, hey, do you have an elf on board? No. No. Nah. And finally, she gets to one where there's an elf with a cloud, and he's like, oh, thank God, our savior's here. And he's like, and he's going, oh, do, 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 do. Um, do, 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 I'm going to drink my blood. <laughs> and she's like, oh shit. Oh no. Oh, this guy. Big investment of time. So <laughs> TLDR plant seeds. Go to her home. Uh, whereabouts? When you want to contact her again, oh, go fine. to a mountain, under a cloudy sky, plant the seed, water it, and chant this thing, and something will happen that will take you to her home, yep. is what she right. says. <clears throat> and then she say, as she leaves, she says, um, I look forward to hearing from you, and hopefully sooner, rather than later. Yes, wait, see you later. She, she brings her hand out in a huge sweeping arc in front of her. <laughs> And like the, uh, the, the condensation trails behind an airplane's wing, her hand leaves condensation trails behind it into like a whip of mist, which trails after her hand and then coils itself up tightly into like a plate of mist that she steps off of the boat and stands onto the, the cloud. And then she starts to be carried away by it. And then as she leaves, her final departing thing is she sort of gestures to, uh, towards the direction your boat is going and says, uh, beware the fade, it comes fast. And looking ahead, you can see there is dark sort of uh, fog that is just kind of gray, gray um, it gradually changes from the relatively bright light that you're in into like this just dark faded mist in front of you. So TLDR of that whole interaction, she gave us seeds in case we need to summon her. What was the reason that we might need to summon her? Once, Basically, he, once I, he knows more about what's going on with him. Yeah, once I know more about the whole voice inside my head and all that kind of thing, I can have more affinity with it, I guess. I can go and use these seeds, plant it to go to a home and help them out with their plague Oh, so, it's, got, so it's not to summon her. It no, takes no, no, take take you, take you to take them. me to takes. a home, yeah. I've written it down as well. Right? To, okay. <laughs> Equipment I've also got. Magic beans. You do. Yeah. You have a magic, be magic bag of beans, which is Jack actually an item stock. I could give you. I really have a beanstalk. Stock. She said it was a beanstalk. Oh, she did say it was a beanstalk. No, right. she didn't. He said it was a beanstalk. Oh. <laughs> it's a beanstalk. Oh, there'll be a beanstalk. There'll be a beanstalk. What happens if you eat one of the beans? Try it. <laughs> Six explodes out of me. Ah! Yeah, probably if it's not under a uh, piercing mountain with a cloudy sky, nothing. 
Yeah. Well, what if we eat it? Or well, maybe a piece of matter. We'll give you more oh, help. And the cheese, the maybe cheese said it had to be in good soil and all this other business. Maybe what if it eats some good maybe, soil? Maybe, <laughs> or maybe it suddenly gives you an additional five permanent health. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? You yeah. don't know. Mm. You don't know. I'm just saying. Might as well you launch gonna... yourself off the ship and try. <laughs> This is the bag of beans. Uh, as you I spend some time with it, you learn its properties. Would like one of those beans. <laughs> what for? I would like to eat it. Why? I have a reason to believe that one of those beans will increase my health. May I please have a bean? Why do you assume that? They are magic beans. Yeah, exactly. They can uh, do so anything. Probably give you health. So. Or grow a giant vein inside you and explode you from the inside I'm out, which uh, I would be a fan uh, of. I'm pretty sure they would give you health. I'll have a bean, thanks. How many beans are there? 12. 12, 12 beans. 12 beans. Can I please have one of those beans? Nope. <laughs> well, well, <Bob>. well said. <laughs> Bob, may I please have one of those beans? <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> I will Get your own god remember, beans. I will remember this. I will be happy. <laughs> you f***ing will, won't you? For 20 years, you'll remember <laughs> this. <laughs> Let you know. Go. The story in 20 years becomes, and the big. Come on, Joe, gave me the beans and Bob stole them from me! <laughs> it's just, I so there is, I'm there convinced <laughs> that one of those beans will increase your health permanently. Anyway. There is a. <laughs> you have no reason to believe Nothing to go that. on at all. Zero reason. I would like a bean. <laughs> There is a big kerfuffle on the ship as the quartermaster is now pointing out this terrible weather ahead and the fact that it w it is miles stretching on either side. Uh, it seems like they've either got no chance but to take several more days to go around or to just go through it and hope for the best. Uh, so and, and this is called the fold, is it? The fade. The fade. Anyway, you've been watching now, too much. Uh, we I'm watching we are currently of episodes, yeah, so yeah. on our way yeah. back to Honeywood. Yes. Right. Yeah, I definitely would not. The ship, eat one the of ship those. was taking, taking. Uh, the ship was going back to good yeah. on. And, and this is to go home, home and live happily ever after. Correct. Great. I'm, I, I, I'm sure I've it'll got go thing, well. I've got things. <laughs> to Nothing do, will get uh, in our way. My blacksmith needs an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your business yeah. needs yeah. some work. I'm, I'm, guys, can I? I'm here in wind tunnels, guys. I want to tell you guys a quick 10 minute little um, <laughs> thing. Have you got 10 minutes, guys? <laughs> the ship uh, hits something. I'm going to turn it Poppy also. Jets you unintentionally. <laughs> 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 unintentionally. <laughs> I draw my swords and I swing them in that area. That's enough. Great. Yeah. Tie me up. I'm going to put the mask on. Oh. My fresh. Okay, what are you doing? Big thanks to Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring this episode. Their new story adventure, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, is coming out soon. And I think it's something like... Um, September 21st in America and Europe. And October the 15th in New Zealand and Australia. I have to talk into my Ron's microphone here. If you want to check it out, the links are below. Thank you. Saved it. <laughs>